Hello Horus Heresy fans, welcome to Heresy, the Horus Heresy talk show. In this episode, we're going to be discussing Space Marine consoles. So, for the uninitiated, what is a Space Marine console? Well, a Space Marine console is a mid-ranking Space Marine officer that fulfills some kind of specialist function. In the Age of Darkness, in the rule set, there is an entry called the Legion Centurion, which is a generic... Uh, Marine that's not skilled in particularly anything but a generic line officer that is a veteran, pretty good in combat, pretty good stats, pretty good equipment options. And what you can do, you can pay to upgrade them to be a Legion console. And when you upgrade them to be a console, they get some special abilities. And there's a lot of them, and they're really interested, and they add some real special rules to the force that wouldn't be available otherwise. So let's take a look at the options. So the basic Centurion is Weapon Skill and Ballistic Skill 5. Two wounds, three attacks, and he's got a two plus save because he's got artificer armor and he's also got a refractor field for a five plus invulnerable save as well. So, from a baseline, pretty good stats, 60 points, not super expensive for what you get. But the weapon options on these guys are a bit more expensive than you find in other places in the book. So, a power weapon will run you 15 points, a thunder hammer will run you 30 points, a power fist will run you 25 points. So, one of these guys equipped is in the sort of 75 to 75 to 90 points range. You give him a weapon, you can stick him in a unit, and he's a pretty good fighter. It's a good way of beefing up a unit, maybe a unit that doesn't get the best melee options. Also beefs up leadership to nine as well if they lose their sergeant, so it means you've got a second character in there. It means someone can fight challenges. It's someone for a better save in the unit. You know, It's a good way of beefing up a unit, and it's not overly expensive to do that. So just from a basic level... Centurions are quite good, but when they get really interesting is obviously when you upgrade them with the console traits. Now, you do have a couple more options for Centurions as well. So, for 25 points more, you can put them in Cataphracti armor, which does mean they can't quite take all of the console options, though. Some of those guys are power armor only. But for that 25 points, you do also get a power weapon and a combi bolter as well, which would normally cost you some points. So, effectively, you're paying 10 points for the Cataphracti armor, which is giving you plus one to your invulnerable save and also an extra wound and with the, the disadvantages that come with Cataphracti armor as well. But for the extra wound alone, probably worth it really for those 10 points. Just bear in mind that because it's Cataphracti armor, if you add it to a unit that is wanting to melee, the whole unit won't be able to sweep in advance. The other option you've got is the Tartaros armor. So that's only running your 15 points above the normal Centurion and that is the cost of a power weapon so effectively you're getting the tartarus armor for free if you were going to give your guy a power weapon and actually because you also get a combi bolter in some ways the unit's actually cheaper so that will also give you the extra wound it won't improve your saves at all because tartarus armor's got the same saves as the basic centurion but the extra wound is important going from two to three so you've got those options there so let's look at what the consoles do that's what we're that's what we're here to talk about that's what we're really here for and we're just going to go through them one by one. So the first one, and one of the biggest ones, is the Librarian. So the Librarian is a 45-point upgrade. And the Librarian, quite simply, gives you access to a Psychic Discipline. It also means you can replace one of your power weapons with a Force Weapon at no additional point cost, which is a great upgrade. Force doubling the strength of the weapon, meaning you'll be able to instant death most things, and also letting you chop your way through corrupted units as well. And the Librarian can take a Psychic Hood for 15 points, which I think is also really good. It gives people minus two leadership on the tests when they're trying to cast Psychic Powers, which turns things from a generally an auto-cast into a not quite as easy to cast. Psychic Disciplines, I've been through in another video about Psychers, so if you want to hear what these, these do exactly, you can go and listen there. But they are very good. And I do think that one librarian is going to show up in most people's lists unless they, they have a, a don't like psychers or something like that. Uh, certainly for some of the, the disciplines that are very powerful, uh, telekinesis, telepathy, pyromancy can be very good as well. Biomancy is also very good. There's lots of choice. And you wouldn't be wrong to put, to put multiple of these in your list, to be honest. And the other great thing about this, like all the consoles, is as well as bringing that psychic power, the librarian with his force weapon and his weapon skill 5 and 3 attacks, bring some beef also to the unit. And whether it's already a combat unit or a unit that wasn't a combat unit, you've also beefed the unit up as well. So it's not just 
the console abilities you get there. But Librarian's super good. The next one is Legion Master of Signals. So this guy is a strategic communicator, and he does quite a lot of different things. So he's got the strategic comms ability, which means once a turn, someone can use his leadership, any friendly unit on the battlefield. So his leadership of nine can be used instead of their leadership, which is a nice thing to have access to. And also as well, while he's on the battlefield, you can reroll your reserves rolls. So if you are taking an army that uses reserves, you want to make really sure they come in as soon as possible. This guy's a really, really good pick. And also on top of that as well, he brings all of the Space Marine comms equipment. So he brings a Cognis Signum. So if he joins a unit, he can give the unit plus one ballistic skill. Really good if you've got a unit of heavy support or special weapons. He brings a Vox Disruptor Array, which means that whenever anyone... Deep Strikes, the Deep Strike Assault is disordered on a 1 to 3. Instead of a 1, you get to deploy their units, which is really good as well. It brings an Augury Scanner, which means the unit that you joins can intercept things uh, more easily when, the, when things are deployed on the battlefield uh, from reserves as well, which is also really good. And then finally, it brings a Nuncio Vox, which is the thing that lets you re-roll um, Scatter, dice on blast weapons as long as this model can see what you're actually shooting at you can re-roll your your scatter dice as well so that's quite a lot um quite a lot of things really um you know it's really good um he does he does a lot of things all in one place um for for a reasonable point cost as well so he is 95 points including the centurion if you don't give him any extra equipment which you don't need to because he'll be hanging out with the unit at the back of the battlefield mostly, and he gives you a lot of buffs. The hardest thing for putting consoles in your army is you only get four HQ slots unless you take a second detachment. And, you know, I think there's lots of scope to include multiple of these in every army. And so 95 points is great for what he brings, especially if you've got reserves you want to come in and he makes use of that role, especially if you've got a unit of something with good guns that really wants to get his buffs for your free interceptor shot and all that kind of stuff as well, and plus one ballistic skill. But yeah, he's a really, he's also a really good buy. Highly recommend considering uh, considering those that for your armies. The next one is the Legion Esoterist, which is kind of interesting. These are sort of, depending on which uh, style of them you take, they're either early Grey Knights and they like to banish demons, or they're early Chaos Sorcerers and they like to summon demons, so they do a couple of different things. So they get their own special psychic discipline, one of which basically reduces the strength and toughness of corrupted units by one, which is very thematic, very cool. Something you might take if your friend plays word bearers and you know you, you say, look, I'm going to bring one of these, it'll be fun, and he agrees, and you bring it with you. Maybe not something you would just put in your army by default, because most of the time it's going to do effectively nothing, uh, which is not so good. Um, and the other psychic power of people who want to summon demons summons ruined stone demons. Now, we don't have rules for ruined stone demons yet, so there's not uh, much you can do with this uh, with this version of it. It's also got its own psychic weapon, which is, is quite interesting. It's strength 5, Assault 12, and Deflagrate, as well as Psychic Focus. Um, so you have to make a psychic uh, check to cast it, but it's strength 5, AP4, Assault 12, Deflagrate, and it wounds demons on a 2 and they have to re-roll their invulnerable saves as well. So that's also a good one if you're fighting against demons, but just generally not actually a bad attack either. It's quite a lot of shots. But this can't, this Esoterist, I think, a bit less relevant until we've got Ruinstone Demons on the scene. So next is the Legion Champion. So he's a Centurion, but his weapon skill goes up to 6. Now this guy costs 35 extra points. His weapon skill goes up to 6, which outside of some Primarchs is the highest it gets in the game right now, so that's very powerful. When he is issued a challenge, or he's got to accept it, and if there is an enemy character in a combat, he's got to challenge as well, which is not always great, because sometimes you just want your, your characters to kill lots of models, so he is good at killing the enemy character, he will help you win the combat on the combat results, but he's not good at actually chopping up enemy models so much. He gets a Paragon Blade for free, which Centurions don't usually have access to either. Only the Praetors get Paragon Blades, and Paragon Blades are really good. So he's kind of good. I've considered putting this in against some of my armies just to have a, a beefier beefcake in some lists, and he's the you know the ultimate beefcake, and to make sure that uh, the characters in the units you know don't get the small characters like a sergeant with a thunder hammer with one wound doesn't just get chopped up 
by an opposing real character as well, which is an interesting use of these two. But I think these are quite good. You can legitimately put these in, in things and lots of good modeling opportunities for space marines in cool poses with, you know, over-the-top ornamental weapons as well. So pretty cool model to use. The next one is the Legion Delegatus, which has got a, a very specific use, really. So the Delegatus is a 25-point upgrade and lets you take a right of war in armies of less than 1,000 points, which you can't normally do uh, without the Praetor. He does have an ability where once a turn, after the start of one of your turns, you take a leadership test. And if it's passed, then all friendly units that are pinned or fallen back that can see him rally once a battle. Now, that could be potentially game-changing, and if you've listened to some of the other videos I've done where I've talked about how good pinning is, a lot of armies are going to try to use pinning to reduce the, the damage that they take, you know, whether it's Night Lords or whether it's people taking Psychers or whatever. They're going to want to try and pin some of your key units, and if you do have a key unit that people might want to pin a lot, for example, Salamander's Fire Drakes, one of the best ways to deal with them is just to pin them and not bother trying to kill them. Having this in the back pocket to be able to just undo the pinning, which as far as I'm aware, I think is the only way to undo pinning at the start of a turn in the game. Could be kind of good, maybe a bit expensive just to do that, but then if your army's hinging on those units that might just be pinned, maybe a thing you might want to want to consider. Next we've got the chaplain. Everybody loves chaplains. I love chaplains. 40k chaplains a little bit more when they've changed the aesthetic and gone through the goth phase. I think I like them a little bit more then, but chaplains are quite good. The unit that he's in gains stubborn and hatred, and his leadership is 10. Now, that this is also powerful for the same reason the Delegatus was good. So, a stubborn unit with leadership 10 is basically immune to all of those nasty pinning things. It's immune to, you know, lose, losing a combat by one or two points and then suddenly breaking and running and getting destroyed is, is an awful thing to have happen to you. And he basically make sure that that doesn't happen really with stubborn and leadership 10 he also gets a crozius arcanum so if he's got a power weapon it's going to be master crafted so he'll get to re-roll one of his hits as well and he gives the entire unit including him hatred so the whole unit's re-rolling all of its hits in combat in the first round of combat as well now that's a great buff there aren't again many ways to deal with pinning and leadership based effects in the game right now one of the best ways you can do it is just by having a high leadership and also you get helped out an awful lot by having stubborn so it, so most things don't modify it so that's a really good uh, good ability and if you put him in a unit that is pretty good in combat let's say that unit is maybe a unit full of board and shields or something like that where they've got some power weapons they're all going to get them re-rolls and even if they do lose a combat you know maybe by one they might not have lost a lot of models because they're tough they're going to stick around and you're not suddenly going to lose an intact unit to morale so i think the chaplain is also a really good option if you're running one of them units see a theme with these consoles running through what a good job they've done of making all of these consoles desirable and you know not too expensive for what they do the the, the chaplain's a 35 point upgrade again next is the vigilator so the vigilator is the sniper and it's got a really good forge world model and also really cool opportunities to model these yourself as well as lots of good bits off the primaris kits for scopes and elongated silence barrels and that kind of stuff as well so the vigilator gains the mark for death rule the same as as uh, seeker squads have he also gets the master sniper rule and you can give him scout or infiltrate your choice at the start of the battlefield uh, at the start of the game so when you make a shooting attack with this guy the master sniper rule He's got Rendon 2 plus, so it means if he wounds, it's always Rendon. And he also gets Shell Shock 1. So because he's a sniper, you're going to be forcing pinning tests on people, and this is going to give them minus 1 leadership, which is exactly what you want. So if you already have them rules, they don't stack, of course. So he gains a Mastercrafted Nemesis Bolter and Melter Bombs for no additional points cost. So basically, this guy's hitting on a 2 with a reroll with his Nemesis Bolter because... His nemesis bolter is master crafted and then he's wounded on a two and that wounded on a two is rendon as well so he's pretty much almost guaranteed to kill a one wound character model anywhere within 72 inches every turn and that could be an apothecary so on turn two he's killed two apothecaries probably he's already made his points back for you He's 35 points, so that's a 95-point model. He's already made his points back, 
on turn two. He's killed 90 points worth of Apothecaries, even if they didn't have any upgrades. And then he's free to go on other stuff. And in, in killing them Apothecaries, he might have also pinned their squads at the same time with his Shell Shock. I think the Vigilator's fantastic. I think he does lots of stuff that you want to do, whether that's killing the sergeants or picking out special weapons or killing those apothecaries that you really want to kill. The Vigilator could go in literally any Space Marine army and you'd never be sad that you had one. Next is the Legion Pathfinder. So the Pathfinder is a scout. So he's only a 10-point upgrade, but he loses his artificer armor and has to replace it with 4 plus save scout armor and a Mastercraft as a starty shotgun. But what he does gain are the scout, infiltrate, move through cover and pathfinder special rules and he increases his movement to eight and also gains the skirmish subtype so this is really interesting because you've effectively by buying this guy for only 70 points which is not very expensive you've gotten the ability to infiltrate or scout any unit in the army just by adding him because when you've got a scout or an infiltrator in your unit you get that ability You've also got move through cover and you're immune to dangerous terrain. So all the movement rules you could possibly want for 70 points. Now, if you could buy a 70 points upgrade for a lot of units that gave them all this, you might well do it. And it also happens to come with that weapon skill 5, politics skill 5 body. So you give him the power sword, he's got the Astartes shotgun and he's bringing all these things as well. And this is really good on something like, you know, a melee squad or just a squad that wants to be further up the field makes it easier to move it round, ignoring the cover and it's not just really not that expensive for what it gives so this is a very interesting upgrade as well for me i think this guy's fantastic next one is the legion herald so he gains the fearless and fear one special rules interestingly doesn't grant them to his unit though as you would maybe expect but what he does do is he comes with a legion standard now the legion standard is a really great piece of war gear predominantly because it gives the unit the line characteristic. So that means that that unit becomes scoring. So by adding this guy to your unit, you can make any unit effectively a scoring unit, which is really good. The second benefit is all units within six, so the unit that this is in and ones nearby, also have a leadership 10 for morale and pin and checks. So going back to what I said before, another one of the ways to actually counteract those pin and uh, and morale effects that you know are quite actually hard to find so this is a really really good upgrade again it comes on a body with three attacks and weapon skill five so don't, don't forget that when you factor in the points cost and he's only a 20 point upgrade as well so this could be 80 points to get access to this guy or you can also put him in cat this is one of the ones you can put in cataphract the armor which you might want to as well so that would make him 105 points with a power weapon to turn a given unit, a very tough unit maybe, into a scoring unit, as well as add a body. That's a really good good trade-off. The next one is the Forge Lord. So this is one of the guys that allows you to bring robots into your army. So he's a 40-point upgrade against Battlesmith 4, Master of Automata, and the Thalaxes special rule, which allows you to bring Thalax cohorts. Now, Lever Mechanicum is not out yet, so we don't know how good this is or isn't. But he does get a Machinator Array, which is a pretty good piece of war gear. It gives you two big servo arm attacks at initiative one. It gives you feel no pain. Uh, five, sorry, no, it doesn't give you feel no pain five. That's what the Iron Father does. But it gives you two additional attacks and plus two to your Battlesmith. So he's effectively Battlesmith two. And a couple of guns as well, Melty Gun and a Flamer. So he's, he's, he's pretty good in terms of upgrade. I think the Machinator Array is a really good thing to have access to. You can also buy a Cyber Familiar. You can buy a Cortex Controller as well. So we'll see how good he is once we know the stats for those those robots. We've got the Primus Medici. So this is a sort of super apothecary. He can make you re-roll your failed it will not die rolls. And he also comes with a Narthesium as well. So he does grant the feel no pain the same way as an apothecary. But it will not die is not a very good rule. And it's particularly not a very good rule on two wound models. And on top of that, there's not many models with it will not die that have it anyway. I do wonder whether this is a typo and it's supposed to let you re-roll feel no pain rolls. And we'll see if that works. But as this stands right now, the Primus Medic has a 45 point upgrade, which is huge. And he's actually pretty poor. So if these rules are correct, uh, this guy is just not very good at all. you would just take an apothecary for under half the points. But if he, it does turn out that that allows you to 
re-roll your feel no pain rolls as well he will be maybe good as a super apothecary will he be worth it compared to a normal apothecary for 45 points maybe not and that might might make him the first one of these consoles i'm actually not very excited about but you know the number of them we've gone to through so far that's a pretty good record siege breaker is next the siege breaker is very good i really like him start of the shooting phase you pick a unit within six inches that unit gains the sunder special rule for the duration of the shooting phase he also comes with a nuncio vox it makes your blast more accurate three phosphex bombs which is you know fine if someone gets close you can throw phosphex bombs at them he also means you can upgrade your rapiers with quad launchers to phosphex canister shot for 20 points and your architors to phosphex shells for 20 points now phosphex shells or phosphex weapons in general are ap2 they're one of the few things in the game that's actually pretty decent at killing terminators although generally terminators have the heavy subtype which does mean that they'll get to re-roll against those blasts that you'll be throwing out so they'll still have a four plus with a re-roll or a five plus with a re-roll so not you know super incredible as it might look at first sight but better than them needing a two but what it is good at is killing space marines obviously because it's got ap2 you know and it wounds them well leaves that blast there as well so this is these are pretty good upgrades but even just for his his basic ability 45 points taking him to 105 base on some units gain and sunder can be very very big so as an example in iron warriors where you have to take a siege breaker for one of their rights of war if you use this on a unit of tyrant terminators with missile launchers which are strength eight iron warriors ones go to strength nine when they're shooting at vehicles and then you give them sunder so you've essentially turned all of those missiles into las cannons pretty much and if you've got a big unit of them tyrant terminators maybe 10 of them they're putting out 20 missile shots strength nine sunder they're gonna blow stuff up regardless of what even if it's armor value 14 you're gonna hurt it lots if it's armor value 15 you're still got a very good chance of doing a lot of whole points damage to it just with glances as well so i quite like the siege breaker you do have to invest quite a lot of points into making your uh stuff phosphex but even just for his basic ability is pretty good next we've got the armistos the armistos is n not very good but very cool and i really want to build one as a as a modeling project so this is the guy who's in charge of heavy weapons for the legion so he gains the heavy subtype he comes with an augury scanner and a cogniz signum so again he gives you that free interceptor and he also gives you the ability to give someone plus one ballistic skill but in heavy support squads where this guy kind of would go you can get those things anyway so you know maybe not so exciting and you can give him a master crafted heavy weapon basically so he can have a master crafted las cannon for example or a master crafted missile launcher so he's actually quite expensive because he's a 15 point upgrade so he's a 75 point centurion and then you pay for the weapon on top so a last cannon is 90 points for a single master crafted last cannon so i'm not sure what this guy's role sort of is if anything i think you take him and you, you put him in units that aren't heavy units so you know maybe because these centurions are relentless by default he can wander around with a heavy weapon and shoot it so maybe if you really wanted to put a Volkite Culverin or a Multi-Melter into a unit of ta 20 Tactical Marines and have this guy lead them around, maybe that would be a thing you'd do. You know, he can use his Cogniz Signum to make all those Bolters, Ballistic Skill 5 or something like that. I don't think he's got great uses, but just a Space Marine with a Mastercrafted Las Cannon seems really good, <laughs> like a great modeling opportunity. So I think I'm going to make one of these just for, just for fun. So next we got the Moratat, uh, gunfighter, dual pistols. He's a scout, he's got counter attack, he's got bitter duty, so he can't join a unit unless that unit's also got bitter duty. And he's got chain fire, so whenever he shoots his pistols, he shoots both of them, and he gets six times the shots, which is kind of crazy. His special rules effectively prevent him from firing too many shots with things that have got armor bane, so inferno pistols or plasma pistols as well as soon as they get hot he has to stop shooting which is normally going to stop him getting his full complement of shots but where i think these get super interesting is when you have certain weapons on them so if you give him disintegrator pistols they do get hot so he is going to stop firing after a few shots but every shot with a disintegrator pistol is very very nasty because it's got instant death and ap2 this is a good way to kill terminators this guy will definitely take a few terminators down 
before his weapon overheats for sure also as well as other things you can do with this so iron hands can take grav pistols so you could give this guy two grav pistols and they don't get hot at all and the haywire so you could have 12 haywire shots out of a 100 or so point model as well it's interesting stuff you can do when you've got access to, to so many shots with a, with a with a model like this the, the question is how do you get it close normally you put it in a unit and he's got bitter duty but there are some bitter duty units out there he can join as well Again, Iron Hands, being an Iron Hands fan, he's got bit of duty. He can join Immortals units. So you can have a 12 shot Grav guy run around with your Immortals units, which is really cool. And, you know, kind of thematic as well for Iron Hands. Very scary if you've got vehicles or dreadnoughts. Uh, then we've got the Mortificator. So this is the dreadnought guy who looks after the dreadnoughts. So he can join a dreadnought Talon. And normally that's that's not a thing that you can do. The Dreadnoughts gain it will not die 5 plus. And also as well, he himself has got Battlesmith 6 plus and he gets a servo arm. So he's going to be on a 5 plus for those those Battlesmith rolls. So this is quite interesting because Dreadnoughts are already very tough. And this guy's only a 20 point upgrade. If he joins the Dreadnought, every turn you've got two 5 plus rolls. The it will not die roll and the Battlesmith roll both to give the Dreadnought back a whole point. And that's quite expensive just to do that, really, because you could just take a Tech Marine and have a Tech Marine following someone around for half the points doing the same. But the Tech Marine can't join the unit, so it's easy to shoot them. So unless the Dreadnought's going to hang around with an actual unit for the Tech Marine to join, this guy's a little bit more protected. And he also you know, brings some melee abilities as well. So if you're going to fight that Dreadnought in melee, you've also got to fight his mate. Not a super great option, this really but a very cool thing to do and it's not something i was even really aware of in the in the warhammer world really that these guys existed so it's cool to to see that then we've got lastly the pravian so this is another one of the cybernetica guys so he controls castellax this time this guy he can take the cortex controller he can take the cyber familiar and he, he effectively just lets you bring castellax with you and, and also Vorax as well, the little fast running guys. So again, we don't know how good those are yet, so it's difficult to rate this guy. But most likely, if they are decent, these are the kind of models. These are the models people like to use. Castellax particularly look very cool. So these are the ones that people tend to use a little bit more. So this guy might be quite popular at this point. So there you go. A summary of all of the consoles available to you in the Horus Heresy. Lots and lots of them are good. And the ones that aren't so good are still viable and they do give you lots of modeling opportunities and opportunities to add some characters to your force whilst also bringing more things that are effective on the table as well. I certainly think we're going to see a lot of librarians. I think you're going to see a lot of siege breakers. I think there's definitely a case for things like chaplains uh, and heralds once people play a few games and get pinned to death and you know are looking for, for answers to those things as well plus they bring other benefits too i think it's a really interesting thing the whole build your own character you know make him do what you want give him your own set of equipment i think it's very cool and i'm really looking forward to it personally my first console builds are going to be a librarian for my iron hands to get me that to get me those telepathic powers to be pinning people and canceling their reactions and also i think a champion as well who's going to be joining one of my uh, one of my immortal units and helping them be a bit better in combat. So I hope you enjoyed that walkthrough of all those consoles. I hope it's given you some ideas of all the cool stuff you can do with this, guys. If you enjoyed the content, please do like and subscribe. It means a lot to me to know that you guys are interested. And if you'd like to discuss anything that's gone on in the show or any topics that I've brought up or give me your thoughts on the topics I've brought up, please do leave me a comment. Always happy to have the discussion. To finish up, I'm going to leave you with a quote, this time from the Dawn of War computer game, which I think is very relevant to this episode. A good soldier obeys without question. A good officer commands without doubt. Bye-bye. <laughs>